There's nothing more important in your business than the customer who wants to give you their car for maintenance and repairs. Set up your customer greeting process properly and you will establish a long-lasting, trust-based relationship with your customers. The software will provide you with all the pertinent vehicle maintenance information you require to have an intelligent conversation with the customer in regards to servicing their vehicle. A good customer greeting process will take less than five minutes and will leave the customer feeling that you understand their vehicle and are competent to provide the needed maintenance and repairs. You will have started to earn the customer's trust. In the new work module we will record customer concerns and add inspections and services, add a contact and vehicle, review deferred items from prior visits, review maintenance items assigned for the vehicle, review the OEM maintenance items for the vehicle, and with this information you will be able to intelligently discuss the maintenance needs for their specific vehicle with the customer and agree on what services or inspections should be performed today. To begin a new work order we must first access work orders. Click the work orders command button on the home ribbon. A tab for work in progress opens. We will discuss this in much greater detail in a future tour but suffice to say that this is where you manage all the work orders and appointments. Let's start a new work order by clicking on the New Work Order Command button on the Work Order ribbon. When we start a new work order, we gather all the customers' concerns before we ask them who they are. Many customers attend to your location with a mental list of items to be done, and if we interrupt their thought process, they may forget items on their list, and this could translate to lost sales opportunities. Our customer reports that they believe their vehicle is leaking coolant. As this is related to the cooling system, we would expand the service category in the tree menu in the left window pane. Click on the tree node beside the cooling system folder. Within each service category, you will find concerns, inspections, and services. They each have distinctive icons to distinguish between them. Our customer is reporting a fluid leak that they believe to be coolant, so we will choose the fluid leak cooling system concern. Click on it. In the middle window pane, you can now provide additional information about the concern so it is documented on the repair order. This serves two purposes. First, it will indicate to the customer that their concerns were documented, and secondly, it will provide a clear report to the technician assigned to the job. Let me document this concern to show you an example. Once you have documented the details of the concern, you would add it to the work order by clicking the Add Command button in the Service Package group on the ribbon. Click it. The Related Service dialog opens. The software allows you to set relationships for concerns, inspections, or services to be related to any other inspection or service. Relationships can be suggested, mandatory, or replacements. Here, the Related Services is providing two suggested inspections for the fluid leak concern. This means you can choose to add either inspection to the work order or neither. Click in the checkbox beside Fluid Leaks Pinpoint Inspection. Now click the OK button. The right window pane now shows a preview of the concern and inspection you've added to the work order. Our customer would also like an oil change while the car is in. I showed you how to navigate using the tree to find concerns, but you can also search. Click in the title box. Type in lube and then press the Enter key. A list of concerns, inspections, and services with the word lube in their title is returned. Click on the lube, oil, and service with blended oil to select it as the requested oil change for the customer. Click the Add Command button in the Service Package group on the ribbon. The Related Services dialog opens with possible upgrade options for the customer's oil change, allowing the service advisor the option to sell an upgraded service. The Lube Oil and Filter Courtesy Inspection is automatically checked as a required item. The customer is not going to upgrade the service today, so we will just click the OK button. Go ahead and click on it. The software presents the concerns, inspections, and services in a true storybook style that is easy to follow and customer friendly. So to recap, we just learned how to navigate the dialog, to document concerns, to select inspections, 
to select services, and to use relationships to make for a more intelligent conversation with the customer about the concerns for their vehicle. Now let's learn about finding and adding contacts in vehicles. Click the Next button to move to the next dialog. The most efficient way to search for a contact is by their home phone number. Click in the search text box. Type in 902-876-7574 and then press the Enter key. The contact search will search my location for a match and if found, the contact would display under this location folder. If I am part of an enterprise, it will then search all other locations and if a match is found, it will appear under the other location folder. Lastly, it will search the reverse 411 directory provided by White Pages Pro. We are obviously dealing with a new customer, as no records were found in the database. You would confirm this is the case, and if so, you would select the contact by clicking on it. Click on it. Now click on the Edit Command button found in the Contact group on the ribbon. The contact opens and allows you to edit any information required. For instance, you may want to collect their email address. Once you edit and save a contact found in White Pages Pro, it will be transferred to your location. This drastically speeds up data entry for new customers. So let's enter in the customer's vehicle. With the contact highlighted, which it already is, click the bottom half of the new command button located in the contact group of the ribbon. A drop-down list appears with your options. Click the new vehicle list item. The easiest way to enter a new vehicle is to use the plate to VIN decoder provided by Carfax. Click in the plate text box. Type in ERX355 and then click the binoculars icon to initiate the search. Carfax reports back the VIN of the vehicle registered to the plate you entered and a list of valid vehicles for the VIN is given. When you hover your mouse over the submodel, additional information pops up that may help you decide which vehicle you need to choose. Select the first one on the list by clicking on it. Now click the OK button. The information populates the vehicle card. Of course there are additional features accessible through the command buttons. For instance, you may discuss what the customer wants to track on their vehicle using the reminder system, and we will discuss that in more detail later. Being this is a new customer, there won't be any history on the vehicle yet. However, you can access the Carfax service history for the vehicle. Click on the Carfax service history command button in the view group of the ribbon. Here you can view the date, mileage, and summary of the services performed each time the vehicle visited a Carfax enabled facility. You can print this out to help you discuss the maintenance of the vehicle with your customer, as well as update your own service records for the vehicle. Click the Save and Close Command button in the Actions group of the ribbon to enter the vehicle. The vehicle has now been entered under the contact and you can add as many vehicles to each contact as required. I've cleared the existing search by phone number and I've searched by name. We are going to use an existing contact and vehicle for this module so we can show you some features for returning customers that would not exist with a new customer because of a lack of service history. We are going to use Priscilla Frail's contact and vehicle. Click on the tree node beside her name. Click on the vehicle with plate number EVP123 to select it. A summary of the contact and vehicle appear in the right window pane. So to recap, we just learned how to navigate the dialog, to search for an existing contact, to add a new contact, to use the reverse 411 directory lookup, to add a new vehicle with the Carfax plate to VIN lookup, and to use Carfax service history lookup. Now let's learn about deferred work from prior visits. Click the Next button to move to the next dialog. 
This is the deferred work dialog, and it displays any work that was estimated but not sold on previous visits. As you can see, on a previous visit, we recommended wiper blades. In the center window pane, you will find the details of the selected deferred item, including the date it was deferred and the price before taxes and other charges. You would have a conversation with your customer about the outstanding items, and as a result of that conversation, you will either sell it, leave it as deferred, or remedy it. I'll show you an example of remedying a service on the next dialog, so let's show you how to sell it. Click on the Wiper Service Package to select it. Now click the Add Command button in the Service Package group of the ribbon. The service has been added to the work order summary in the right window pane. So to recap, we just learned how to navigate the dialog, to view deferred items, to add deferred items to our current work order. So now let's continue and learn about OEM service intervals. Before we proceed to the next dialog, notice that the vehicle in the preview screen is trying to bring to our attention that the mileage should be updated by highlighting the current text box. The next two dialogs use the odometer reading to help determine what services may be due for the vehicle. The last mileage text box displays the odometer reading of the vehicle documented on its last visit. If you don't update the current odometer, this mileage reading will be used on the next two dialogs. Let's update the current odometer reading. Click in the current text box. Enter 90,000 in the text box and then click the next button to move to the next dialog. This is the service interval dialog. The interval displayed is automatically selected based on the last mileage recorded for the vehicle or the current mileage if you updated it like we did in the previous dialog. If you wish to change the interval that is displaying, you can simply click the drop-down list and choose from the list of intervals. While radio buttons allow you to display normal or severe intervals. If you wish to add a service interval to the work order, there are two ways to accomplish that. You can add the interval as one complete service or pick and choose what services you wish to add individually. This particular vehicle has different intervals based on the submodel. Ours is the base model, so if we choose to add the appropriate interval as one service, we would click the first checkbox in the type column under the one service tab. Click on it. Now click on the add button to add it to the work order. When we do this, the job appears as one service package under the inspection chapter of the work order. Although the labor time is entered for the service, all the part lines are not from your defined service packages, so there is no part catalog lookup. You will have to enter each part in the catalog search to find the parts. This service package is not connected to any of the reminder items, so their intervals will not be reset. Using these services instead of your defined service packages will prove to be time consuming and frustrating. To add the job separately, we would select the As Multiple Services tab. Click on it. Let's first select the inspection, so click in the first checkbox in the type column for the base model. Let's also click the checkbox for the lubricate door hinges and locks. We will also do an oil change, so click the checkbox beside replace engine oil and beside the replace engine oil filter. Now click the add button. When you add the jobs separately, the work order looks like this. Note that the engine oil and the engine oil filter are listed as two jobs. The part lines are not from your defined packages, so there is no part catalog lookup. You will have to enter each part in the catalog search to find the parts. These service packages are not connected to any of the reminder items, so the intervals will not be reset. Using these services instead of your defined service packages will prove time consuming and frustrating. So the best practice is to select the inspection only from the As Multiple Services tab. Click the first checkbox in the Type column for the base model. Now click the Add button to add it to the work order. It will be added under the Inspection chapter on the work order. By selecting the inspection only, the inspection form will print for my technician, and then I can select my defined service packages to complete the estimate. By using my defined service packages, I have all my catalog lookups completed, the reminder item intervals will be reset as applicable, and it is the fastest and easiest way to complete my estimate. 
So to recap, we just learned how to navigate the dialog, to select the interval by mileage, to switch between normal and severe service intervals, to add as one service, to add as multiple services, and to add the inspection only. Now let's learn about reminder items. Click the next button to move to the next dialog. This brings us to the reminder dialog which are services and inspections that you and the customer have decided they wish to be reminded on to perform on agreed upon intervals. The name of each service or inspection is listed along with the interval, last service date, and the due date for the next interval. The action button is used to modify the reminder item list by adding or deleting reminder items in groups. Reminder items are picked from a list of services and inspections defined by your shop as the most common services that a customer would be reminded on. You can group items to create common groups that would apply to many of your customers. If you had a lot of customers with BMW vehicles, then you could create a BMW group for those contacts, or a special fleet group for a fleet account. Please note the catalog intervals for normal and severe are shown at the bottom of the reminder screen for your information. When assigning the oil change interval, it is important to inform the customer what the OEM intervals are and then ask the customer what interval they want to be scheduled for. This reminder interval is what will determine the next visit appointment date at the end of today's service visit. So getting the customer to agree to the desired interval at this point will make it very easy to get an agreement on the next scheduled service appointment at the end of the day. If the vehicle is maintained with an oil life monitor or an alternate service schedule that alerts the customer when an oil change is due, then the catalog intervals will show zero. If no OEM maintenance is available for the vehicle, then no catalog interval data can be displayed. Adding any of these services or inspections is very similar to the deferred work dialog. You would simply select it and then click on the add command button in the service package group on the ribbon. You've seen that already, and I told you I would show you how to remedy something this time around. So let's say during our conversation with the customer, they informed us that they just had new tires installed last week at another shop. Of course, we would want to log this so that we can accurately remind them when the service is due again. Click on the tire rotation service to select it. Now click on the action button drop down menu. Click on the remedy menu item. This opens the service event window. Let's set the date that the service was performed. Click on the date combo box arrow. Click on Monday the 2nd. Let's also update the mileage the service was performed at. Click in the usage text box. Type in 84,100 and then click in the note text area. I'll type in a note that you might add so that you have an idea why the service was remedied. And I'll scroll down the list of possible services that can remedy a tire rotation. Select the tire rotation service by clicking on it. Now click the OK button. The tire rotation service now shows as due in the future with a green flag and that it was manually entered. So to recap, we just learned how to navigate the dialog, to add new reminder items or reminder groups to a vehicle. To view the status of the reminder item by due date or mileage. To use the catalog interval to confirm the customer's desired interval. To remedy a reminder item. Now let's learn how to print and file the work order into my workflow. Click the next button to move to the next dialog. Before the new work wizard finishes, it scans the work order for keywords like oil, coolant, etc so that it may help with fluid capacities and types. For items where there is only one option, they will be pre-selected like you see under the recommended viscosity. That will also be the case if the question was previously answered. However, we've never answered whether we would like the quantity of oil to be in quarts or liters. Click the checkbox beside three and a half quarts. Now click the OK button. We have arrived at the last dialog which simply displays a summary of the work order. You can edit the contact or vehicle information by clicking on the name or model respectively. At this stage another useful tool is the ability to attach a note to the work order with any special instructions like the customer is waiting or needs a shuttle to work. Click the finish button. 
the work order becomes a tab document. And as a result of the fluid capacities dialog, you can see the quantity of the oil has been set as well as the viscosity to be used. This can be a huge time saver for the technician. At this stage, the work order is typically printed and then saved to work in progress. Click the Print Command button in the Actions group of the ribbon. You are given the option to choose which document to print. Click the Template drop-down list. You have several templates to choose from. Let's go with our default authorization and inspection document. Click on Now click the OK button. You are then given a standard Windows Print dialog where you can choose a different printer and properties. Click the OK button. Alternatively, you can use Quick Print to avoid the printer dialog, as well as Preview, Email, and Export to PDF. Now let's save it to work in progress. Click the Save and Close Command button in the Actions group of the ribbon. I'm presented with some workflow options. Because I have not assigned a technician to this work order, I have limited options. Typically, I would either save it as scheduled for later today, if the vehicle isn't actually here yet, or I would save it as a vehicle on site if it isn't ready to be assigned to a specific technician yet. Click the vehicle on site to indicate that the vehicle is physically here but has not been assigned yet. As you can see it was filed under unassigned work in work in progress along with any notes attached waiting to be managed through the workflow system. Okay I've hit rewind and we are back saving the work order so I can show you the difference once a technician has been assigned. The work order panel allows you to do various things like set appointment and promise times, assign a service advisor and technician, and that is what we're looking for. Click on the Not Assigned text beside the technician label. Select Howie from the list. Now click the Save and Close command button. As you can see, there are many more options now with regards to the workflow and status of the job. Let's indicate that the assigned technician is inspecting the vehicle by clicking on the Inspection in Progress item in the list. And now you can see the work order has been saved as In Progress under Howie, the Assigned Technician's folder. And that concludes the New Work module. In the New Work module, we learned how to record customer concerns and add inspections and services, add a contact and vehicle, review deferred items from prior visits, Review maintenance items assigned to the vehicle. Review the OEM maintenance items for the vehicle. And with the use of this information, you will be able to intelligently discuss the maintenance needs of this specific vehicle with your customer and agree on what services or inspections should be performed.